Uh, hi, Ant. Thank you so much for talking to us at Medicine in a Nutshell. Uh, you, you are an ENT registrar, is that correct? That's true. Yeah. Yes. So could you tell us for people who are not really sure what, what ENT is all about? Could you give us a little brief summary of what ENT is all about? Right, ear, nose and throat is a um, specialty of uh, surgery. It, it, uh, it's, it comprises of um, surgical and medical problems related to your ears, nose and throat, uh, all the structures in the head and neck except for your eyes and brain. Okay, and so th does that involve um, patients who have cancer and all of that yes. as well? Yes, yeah. Uh, it, it starts from uh, small problems um, in, in lifestyle, really, like um, having difficulty breathing to one side of your nose, which can, which we can correct, um, to uh, all the major head and neck cancers, uh, which could be life-threatening as well. Okay, uh, and so when one becomes an ENT surgeon, uh, does one uh, get to choose which bit or decide which bit of, sounds like a big field. Yeah, it is one of, I think it's one of the most diverse specialty in itself. Um, ears, noses, throat, head and neck, laryngology dealing with voice, um, facial plastics is all a part of a remit which in, involves ENT. Okay, uh, and how long have you been an ENT registrar? Um, um, I've been, this is my third year running. Okay, and, and what do you do? How, how do you find what you do and what do you do on a sort of weekly basis? Right, so our, um, our week is divided into uh, clinics and uh, theatre sessions and, um, and then we're on call as well. Uh, over 24 hours looking after patients which arrive in A&E or inpatients in the hospital uh, who have ear, nose and throat problems. Uh, these could be post-operative patients as well as uh, emergency patients uh, that need attention to their airway, uh, which, is, which, is, which, is, which is the most common or most uh, important aspect of emergency that we manage. Okay, and I see that on your right side there looks like a, a microscope up there. Yeah. I mean, is, is um, using the microscope that's fairly regular part of what you yeah, do? Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that attracted to me towards this specialty. What, what happened was when I was a child, I was actually very involved in um, Legos and uh, building up uh, remote control cars and things of that sort, so playing with my hands, you know. Um, and when I was in medicine, I thought uh, medicine, physician stuff or medical stuff is something which is, which is not interesting as much as just correcting things. Uh, but when I got into a more of a surgical experience, I thought ear, nose and throat because of his diversity, and I'll explain that in a minute what that means, um, attracted towards me towards this specialty. So for example, if you're treating the conditions of the ear, to look into the ear canal, you actually have to use a microscope which magnifies everything, else, everything up. Even doing surgeries, which could last up to four hours for major reconstructions, you're constantly sitting under the microscope using very tiny instruments, um, uh, getting the disease out and also repairing the, the ear mechanics. Um, the, the other aspect of ears uh, of, of ear, nose, and throat is nose. So for, for previously, they used to use um, open approaches to the, to the to the face to get into the sinuses and the nasal cavities for obstructive lesions or polyps or things of that sort, which are medical terms. But obviously, we don't we won't relate to. Uh, but these days, what we do is we use endoscopes. They're like like pencil thin. We go up the nose. We use micro instruments um, to go into the cavity, nasal cavity, and the sinuses around it. And so um, that's like keyhole surgery. It, it is. It is so very much like keyhole surgery. Yes, yeah. minimally invasive. And then for the, for the, for the larynx as well, uh, we use metallic tubes. Um, they've got uh, robotic surgery now. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, any of your watchers have um, uh, heard of the Da Vinci system, but uh, that's that's a major role to play in ENT as well uh, for transoral uh, robotic um, uh, approaches to the, to the head and neck cancer and, um, and other, other aspects like microsurgery of the voice box. Uh, so professional singers, um, um, models, actresses for facial plastics, uh, congenital problems with like bad ear, protruding ears, and um, na nasal injuries from, from professional injuries. Uh, they're all dealt with in, in the ENT remit. So it sounds like a very, very broad remit. Very, very and diverse, yes. Also sounds like fairly cutting edge. So there's a lot of progress being made recently with all these robotics all the, and all yes, that. Yes, all the time. I mean, uh, Botox uh, is, 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 has, has ma major impact on, on how we deal with uh, um, aging process or wrinkles. So yes, yeah, so we use Botox for, for anti-aging, but you're saying you use Botox in, in ENT for yeah, other things? Yeah, for, for other diseases. There's, there's a condition where you get tremors of the soft palate, uh, which, is, which is like the roof of your mouth, and you can actually inject Botox, Botox to, to, to cure that. So there are other conditions that it, that it can be applicable to. Fantastic. So do you enjoy being an ENT registrar? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that I wanted to do uh, when, I, when I got into medicine, when I was doing our observership, and uh, it's something I worked, worked towards for, and it's something to look forward to for the rest of my career.
And, and how many years uh, do you train as a registrar before you become a consultant? Yes, uh, to become a consultant um, in, in the UK, you have to, after your fi five years of medicine, you have to do two years of foundation year training and a couple of years of core training in surgery. And it's very competitive to get into a national selection. But once you're in, you get it for six years. And there's a trend to take a year of a year fellowship out after this before applying for a consultant post. That's usually done abroad. Fantastic. So that's been a, a really nice, useful insight into ENT surgery. Thank you very much. I thought I should give you back something in terms of insight. Being a plastic surgeon, did you know that the father of plastic surgery, Harold Gillies, was actually an ENT surgeon? I did not know. Ah, I see. And then he, he, he actually created plastic surgery. So we do have a link between your surgical field and mine. Thank you very much. That Thank you very much for that. Thank you for inviting me.